Council. Good afternoon. I'm David Quinones. I'm the Deputy Chief of Operation for the Denver Police Department. I was asked to speak about an incident that was captured on video on the uh, 16th Street Mall last night at 16th in, in Cleveland. And what we know about this incident so far is we had a, an individual who was caught on video assaulting uh, several individuals with what appears to be some kind of a, a pipe. We have one victim as a result of that. The very first people that were actually assaulted uh, did not come forward, did not remain on scene, and we would like to speak to them if they are still, uh, still around and they want to file a report, we would like to speak to them. If anybody else has any additional video or information related to that assault, the detectives, the investigators would like to speak to them as well so that we can present the case to, to the uh, district attorney and get the charges filed as, as appropriate. This individual, what we know of him, is actually new to town. He's, he hasn't been in town more than, more than a week. Um, he, he, by all appearances, we, we think he's, he's homeless. He had some uh, issues last night. We don't know if they are mental health issues or if they are drug-related issues, but he was very uh, incoherent with us. Um, he, he did not resist the officers. He was taken into custody without incident. We actually suspect that he was involved in multiple incidents prior to this. For about 40 minutes, we received four calls that he fits the description of that officers were responding to in the downtown area before we finally caught up to him at uh, 16th and Cleveland where he was taken into custody. Uh, we are, again, we are looking at aggravated assault charges, second degree assault charges on the, on the individual. He, he did create another disturbance uh, when we took him into custody and turned him over to the sheriff's department. So uh, this is the type of behavior that we are addressing on the mall. This is the type of behavior that we have said repeatedly will not be tolerated on the mall. Uh, he was taken into custody three minutes after the officers received that call to 16th and Cleveland. We are, the, I spoke with the detective prior to coming here. He, like I said, he's been here for about nine days. Uh, she had a, a record of some assaults, but we don't have an in-depth record yet. We haven't gone to the state that he is from. Let me say, make a couple more uh, real quick statements before we go into Q&A and we can try to answer everyone's questions. Um, and I want to thank Chief Q for, for coming in to, uh, I should say, Keonis. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Those of us who work with him every day. Uh, for coming in and giving us the, the information about the, the uh, individual we're dealing with. Uh, but he is absolutely correct. This is the type of behavior and the type of individual that we've been seeing in downtown Denver. These are travelers to our city, uh, carpetbagger travelers who come here uh, primarily uh, to engage in the, the, uh, the hanging out on our mall and, and to do other things in this city. And it's, uh, we're dealing them with them as best we can. Um, it's because we had the number of officers downtown as we were beginning to ramp up that they were able to get to this location within three minutes. And it's uh, unfortunate that this gentleman was able to get a couple swings on individuals, uh, or a few swings before the police arrived, but it's because we had the number of officers there that they were able to uh, uh, get to him within three minutes. Let me also say this. Um, as per the conversation I had this week and made very clear that we're going to take this very seriously, we're going to have zero tolerance for this type of behavior on our mall. Um, I've instructed the city attorney's office to request to the district attorney's office because this is a state case um, to request as part of the prosecution uh, error restrictions on this individual from the downtown area and the mall. And so we'll do everything we can, uh, hopefully in partnership with the district attorney, to, to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law, as well as to put in those restrictions and, again, begin the process of keeping the folks who are on our mall and our downtown area safe. Um, so, again, I want to thank you all for coming. I certainly want to thank the police department for responding as quickly. Let me make one last point, and then we'll do Q&A. A A lot of people witnessed what happened yesterday. Um, and as Chief uh, Keonis pointed out, we still need to talk with every, every one of the witnesses. And again, anyone else who may have been victimized or, or witnessed this gentleman who may have been involved in uh, up to four other incidents in downtown Denver, um, or not necessarily in the mall, but around downtown area, uh, we want to hear from you. If you saw something, please uh, contact us so that we can get uh, make sure that we prosecute this individual to the fullest extent of law for every uh, incident that he was involved with yesterday. Let's do a question and answer now. Mayor, this was all over the internet, this mm -hmm. video of this. Mm -hmm. um, how damaging is that to the city that that's the image that goes up? Obviously, you never want these kind of images um, because they become reality in people's minds. And those of us who live here, 
Uh, we know there are challenges along the mall, by, but by no means whatsoever do we promote or believe that the images that are being portrayed in these videos are what Denver is about or the lifestyle of our city. Uh, as we are expecting this weekend, um, a very, we are expecting record-breaking tourism this weekend. Goes to show you that people see Denver as a destination. They recognize that it is uh, one of the safest places in the country you can visit. That's the true image of Denver. These incidents are not Denver. And that's why we're moving quickly to make sure we deal with them effectively and that they don't continue to occur in our city. Mayor, yes. Is there anything you guys can do or maybe talk to city council? And I know your hands are somewhat constrained by court rulings and the Constitution. But in, in terms of tweaking the laws or something so that Besides just not tolerating it when it happens, then you can do something to prevent it from happening in the first place. You better believe we're also, we're going to continue to pursue every possible avenue. And we do have civil liberties of every individual who wants to walk up and down that mall. Uh, we've asked a lot of ourselves a lot of questions. There have been a lot of uh, Supreme Court decisions, uh, a lot of court um, cases in which to point to. The reality, whatever we get an opportunity where we can create or tighten the restrictions or tighten uh, the possibility of, of making sure these don't happen again on our mall, we will. Mm -hmm. How do you fight this? Because you can't predict his behavior or behavior like uh, of anyone else right, like that. Right. How can, other than getting DPD out there to arrest mm -hmm. him, how can you prevent and stop? Well, I think you just went straight to the heart of the realities is that it's not practical to believe you're going to stop every incident in this city or even on a concentrated area like the mall. It's a one mile stretch. And uh, unless we put. Uh, two or three hundred officers along the way, you'll never be able to prevent every possible incident occurring along that mall. And here's the reality. This is not just a policing your way out of the situation. It's going to take, as Chief White, I think, appropriately pointed out, uh, the, the building owners or property owners along the mall participating, making sure people aren't leaning on their properties, uh, working with us to clean up areas. You know, we're going to continue to work with that McDonald's, but that area around that McDonald's has been a problem, and we need McDonald's to step up and to be a partner with us on this and to, you know, not feed people who are not purchasing their products and to ask people to move along who may be leaning and resting on their building, but that's the kind of comprehensive approach that we're going to need. We're going to need folks who are watching and witnessing th these things to call right away and to try to keep each other safe as much as we possibly can. It's going to take an entire community response. We can't just arrest our way out of this. We all are going to have to be involved, and I know that's what the chief was talking about uh, the, earlier this week. Lance? Did, were these victims all just random victims, or did they do anything to, I don't mean provoke, but just irritate them? They appear to be just random victims at this time. They, there was no confrontation between them. Uh, um, the, I can't get into specifics of, of the other incident we're investigating because we still do need to, to get this victim to, to look at a photo array. And, but we just suspect he was just randomly running around acting, uh, acting up. And like I said, we suspect that there's four disturbances that he was involved in that officers were responding to at that time. So the time frame started at about uh, 5.23, and then we took him to custody at 6.10. So, but within about a four to five block uh, area, he appears to have been just causing disturbances. What kind of disturbances what, what, what was he doing? Altercations with individuals. Uh, the only assaults that we're aware of are the two that we are investigating. The first two, we, we, were, we just had calls from citizens, which, as the mayor said and as the chief has said, we need people to call so we can respond to these. But we did not contact uh, any, any victims at those other two scenes. When you say altercation, such a police word, was, was he, and I appreciate that, we, was, he, was he verbally abusive? Uh, just, he was just creating the d disturbances. We were responding to disturbances at, at, at two other locations besides the two that we're aware of. They just came in, a, a, a guy acting up. I haven't listened to the calls. But, but there were two other locations that we were dispatching officers to. Do you and again, have any, any sense about, if you alluded that he may have been on something, do you have any sense of what that was? And are you looking to find out what that was? We, we will probably not look into what the, what the intoxicants he was under. These are, these are just based on, on comments that he made to the arresting officers. Mr. Mayor, just a bigger picture with some of the problems you've been having on the mall. Uh, you say these people are coming here to hang out on the mall and do other things. What is drawing them here? Let's say, let's be clear, marijuana is drawing people to the mall. The, the travelers are coming, they're very clear, and I can tell you this because I have talked to the travelers. Um, last year, Chief White and I went to a circle of them, 
Asked them where they were from. There were probably about 12 of them there. Not one of them was from Denver or from the state of Colorado. They hitchhiked or hopped trains to get here. And when we asked them, why did you come? It was very clear to, to they were very candid with us. They came here for marijuana. And so this is one of the, uh, the um, results of, of the legal marijuana industry in, in Denver. And we're going to have to deal with it. And these are some of the unintended consequences and the things that we were very serious about. When I said uh, two years ago or two and a half years ago about marijuana becoming legal, we don't know what it means. And we'll, it's too early to tell how it will impact our communities. Uh, but we made a commitment. And that commitment was our job is to protect the citizens of Denver, the neighborhoods, and our children of this city. And we're going to do everything we can to do that. But we are certainly seeing urban travelers in this city. Um, and I, in my meeting with the police department, uh, just what was last week when I had commanders and lieutenants with, you know, they, across the city, they estimate there are as many as 150 travelers in this city today. And they don't have a place to stay. They're in our parks. We're seeing them at Commons Park, Confluence Park, uh, throughout the city. They're here. They, some of them are panhandling during the day. They're going in and out of our shelters. Uh, they're taking beds from our legitimately chronically homeless individuals. Um, and they are they're partaking in the industry. So there's no need for me to pass it. They were candid with me about why they were here. And so we know it's a challenge. And I don't think it's an indictment on the industry. It's an indictment on the fact that we this became a legal substance in our community and people are coming as a result of it. Speaking of the industry, what do you do? Do you go to the dispensaries? Is there a way to work with them? Is there anything they I think you heard. You heard the chief make a request, uh, particularly those who are in the downtown area, not to sell joints individually. Um, but, you know, I'm sure, as the industry has in the past, been willing to come to the table. And if there's anything they can do to help this issue, and we'll certainly reach out to them, but if there's anything they can do, I'm sure they'll come to the table to help us. Jay, can you talk about the private security company that uh, the city has hired uh, to help with the mall? Are they going to be post-certified, like police officers? What sort of training will have? Will they have uh, arresting authority? What sort of... Uh, training do they have and how yeah. are they going to complement the Denver Police Department? The, the, the answer to that question is more appropriately answered by De Downtown Denver Partnership. I know they won't have the authority to arrest, um, but I would talk to them directly because they will fall under their uh, responsibility. If I could follow that, will they have the ability to get physical with folks like this individual that we saw last night? Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a difficult question to ask for private security. Um, obviously, any citizen can make a citizen's arrest. If, if, if they so choose. They, you don't want to, some, some organizations, uh, private security, do not advocate their people getting involved in physical altercations for liability issues, but there will be more um, eyes and ears out there for us. We will work cooperatively with them. We are working with the bid on, on, um, on their selection process so that it is a, a legitimate organization that, that we can work closely with. It's, uh, it's going to put more, more people out there that's going to help us accomplish our mission of making the mall even safer than what it is. Is there anything you can do, uh, and then they all told us that, that, they, that with Burlington Northern River, the trains are just like, Stop them from. I mean, that's a crime. I think I mean, it, it is a it is a crime, and and the railroads they have their their own police. Obviously, until they get here, uh, we don't we don't know how they got here. There's multiple ways for them to get here, but we we do work closely with Burlington Northern. We we have trespass agreements with them. If people are on their property, we can uh, assist them without them being there. So we do work closely with the with the railroad police. Excuse me. Do you speak Spanish? Can you make a comment in Spanish? Sí, sí, seguro, seguro, sí. So, en el centro de, de Denver hemos tenido problemas con, con visitantes que vienen aquí no nomás a, a visitar, pero a, a quebrar la ley. Y lo, lo, el mensaje que queremos decir es que no vamos a, no, no, no los vamos a dejar que hagan eso. Los, los vamos a arrestar. Pasó dos días, sí, y sí tenían los oficiales allí. Pero este, este, este persona, lo que hizo, hizo muy rápido. Si usted vio el, el, el video, pasó muy rápido y lo arrestamos en tres minutos de lo que pasó eso. Pero no podemos poner un, un oficial en, en todos los bloques. Nada okay? más un poquito de lo que describió ahorita. ¿Quién era él? ¿De dónde venía? Él viene, no, no es de Colorado, nomás tiene nueve días que, que está aquí. No tiene dónde vivir, está en las calles. Y, y tiene problemas con, con drogas y, y posiblemente otros problemas que, que, que le causó hacer esto. Okay. Let me just repeat, we need, we need, yes, sir. Do you feel, are you a little bit alluded to that the business needed, bigger businesses needed to step up 
Do you feel that the business community has not stepped up in terms of its private No, they've been partners. And it, it, we, we now have kind of a, I think the chief laid it out, I know the chief laid it out, more specifically the things we need them to do downtown. So the businesses along the mall have been involved, have asked for our assistance, and we've asked for their assistance. So it's a partnership. And the downtown Denver partnership has remained a partner with us as well. So the reality is that there is a partnership in place. They now know specifically from the city what will help us help them to make sure that everyone remains safe and that it is a uh, hospitable, comfortable environment for everyone in downtown. Last question. And you had a follow-up no, last time? Okay, so last one, then we'll go. I gotta. I understand that you yeah. gotta go maybe with yeah. the, the chief camp. Sure. I'm, I'm wondering what the police department is looking for from the private contractor, the security firm, in terms of qualifications for their people to help you do the job. If they don't have the arresting authority, you must have a list of. And, and like, like the mayor said, that, that's a question that's more appropriate for for the, uh, the business improvement district who is going to do the hiring because they will be responsible to them. But we are working with them. And, and the individual that they hired to, to be their security director to identify the right company. We, we will sit in on the, on the interview process. We will be part of the RFP review for them to, to get the right people out there. I fully anticipate they would hire a, a good company that we can work with. And what we're looking for are partners, partners to be out there. Uh, when, when, when we can't be on every block, as, as the mayor said, they, we will have communication with them. However, that is... is uh, rolled out. We will have communication with them. They can, they can tell us. I think if you have people just like the police on the same blocks, the same times, same days, they get to know what belongs, what doesn't belong. And they'll, be, they'll learn when they need to report it to us and when it's something that they can handle. And we, we, there's very good companies out there that we can work with, and I, and I anticipate they'll hire the right one. So. Thank you all. We appreciate it.